Welcome to FRC 4607 CIS Podcast. I'm Amelia. I am captain of the team, and I have had four years, no, five years in first, and yeah. Yeah, um, I'm Greg. I am the lead of our build team. Uh, I've been in first since seventh grade, so probably about five years now, and uh, yeah. I am Kayla. I am a lead of the impact slash outreach department. Um, I have been in FRC for two years, but this is my third year in first as I was on an FTC team. We didn't really have much of a mentor, but we made it and we did great. Um, yeah, happy to be here. So much since last season ended. Like it ended back in April after Worlds. So do we just kind of want to recap a little bit about that? Yeah. I know we went through state in May and we won, which was amazing. But after that, we've done so much with the community and just training that. So, Yeah, do we want to start with like just community outreach yeah. or okay so uh for starters after we had one at state which was super awesome with some of our other alliance members um we kind of started to wind down a little bit and get more into like outreach and um one of the things we did was we went to becker freedom days mm -hmm. that was really fun we have our own float and we bring it through and we like throw out candy and spray people with water guns because it's like 90 degrees outside and it's <laughs> super hot. Um, so that was really fun and we did end up having Harold the Duck getting pulled behind for a short period of time. If you're not aware, he's our unofficial slash official team mascot. So, And I think too, like after the parade, um, it's just amazing to see like the town get together and everything, but we, a few members of our team were able to go volunteer with some of the games that they have for um, community members. So it was great to see kind of that interaction. Not everything is about just having the robot showcasing that, mm -hmm. but it was just really good to see the interaction with that. Yeah, yeah, there were a lot of kids there and whatnot, so it's really good to be able to expose STEM to that younger audience because that's really going to be the future of not just our team, but STEM as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I think too, because like after Freedom Days, we kind of took a break there in July, but we did um, Benton County Fair, which mm -hmm. was really fun to see all the, like, the kids kind of enjoying the robotics and just being able to show off to them like mm -hmm. what we were doing. It's like a demonstration, but a little mm -hmm. more intimate because you can talk one-on-one -on -one with the kids. Yeah, kind of especially at the Benton County Fair, kind of got them hands-on with a mm -hmm. couple of robots. I think uh, Luke Sock Rapids had theirs out there. Yes, and, uh, there's a few other teams out there. So. Yeah, a few others as well. And kind of, yeah, I got some kids some driving experience, definitely. Definitely there were some kids interested, so. Yeah, it was really fun, honestly. And then we went to State Fair, which was mm -hmm. also amazing. Do either of you two want to kind of elaborate on that? Yeah, I, that was such a good time. <laughs> For starters, we got to showcase our robot to entirely new people um, with other teams and interact with them while eating ama amazing delicious state fair food and it, like how much better can it get from that we, we literally like the chocolate banana stand was right outside <laughs> and i felt so happy because of yes. that yes um you guys got chocolate bananas oh yeah there so was also many. the pickled pizza stand right outside they always had a line what? literally for all day when they opened at like 9 a.m till 10 p.m their line wrapped around the block the line was insane. huge i've actually never had it but i've heard it's delicious i yeah. i didn't have it either but it's pretty good but, it but it was awesome. We had our own, like, corner, mm -hmm. um, and there were bleachers around, and then we had our own little space where we could kind of, like, hang out, and we were making, we were making sure to stay hydrated and whatnot, because, again, it was, like, 90 degrees. We picked the warmest day of the state fair to yeah. go down there, so. Yeah, it was really, it was really, really hot, but um, yeah. they did have some, like, air conditioning, and what mm -hmm. building were we in? Do you remember? Like, the education uh, building? The education building, yeah. yeah. And so, it was really awesome, because... And it wasn't just, like, kids, but I had, like, grandparents coming up to mm -hmm. me being like, what, what is this? Like, what is FIRST all about? And they were like, my grandkid loves robots. And it was, it was just super interesting because yeah. people of all ages were coming mm -hmm. through the fair, and they, would, they weren't even expecting to see what they did. And they just asked questions, and people wanted to get involved. Yeah, no, you kind of building off that, it's, it wasn't only people interested in technology or STEM. It was people... You, that, I mean, you may not normally think would be interested in something like that. We're kind of able to see what you were doing and really did kind of take an interest in that. And that was cool to see. And I know it wasn't just a showcase part, too. Like, we got to walk in the parade in front of everyone, which was a lot of fun. Again, it was really warm. So that was trying to stay hydrated during the whole thing was a little 
tough. But then when we got back, we did our last showcase, and then it was just really good to have team bonding time after that. I, I really enjoyed going in front of like the large audiences we mm -hmm. had and, and speaking because we had the showcases consisted of three teams, so it would be. Um, like the robots would be like one, two, three, and then we'd speak one at a time. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. Um, and then we got to meet the mascots of the state yeah. fair. And we got pictures with them. What are their names? Oh. Oh boy. They're like the little gopher yeah. chipmunk dudes. Um. <laughs> they're just, they're pretty big though. They were, <laughs> and it was so hot. Was Can it Fairchild? Yeah. It was Fairchild fair in Fairborn or something like that. Yeah, but we met Fairchild. Yeah. yeah. But I got a picture so. with both of them. Yeah, I was so. really excited about that. It was really fun. We yeah. had a lot of fun, and it was definitely it was definitely worth the heat. And I think we'll definitely yeah. look into doing it again. Yeah. I mean, past that, we started up. I know it kind of started last year, but Operation Carmel Lights. I think you got to speak on that a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, Operation Carmel Lights has kind of been my baby. Um, for those who are unaware, is we have Girl Scouts come into our shop, and then we teach them about STEM. We have them doing everything hands on. So. Um, for the younger ages, they learn about how to code an FLL robot, and then they learn how to drive an FTC robot, um, and then they get to interact with our FRC robot as well as learn about some of its mechanics. And what's so interesting about this initiative is that it is going to be replicatable for other teams. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like the big the big pow factor is that it's not just it's not just for us. Yeah. yeah. Like, and that's what first is all about mm -hmm. is transparency and like sharing things and being open mm -hmm. with other people as well as teams so we we even made a binder which is like i don't know like 20 pages mm -hmm. long um we had a lot of editing go through it um and so we're going to be ready at regionals to share this with other teams mm -hmm. we have a flyer being made logos being made work is being worked on right now by media and marketing mm -hmm. so we're really excited this is like one of our main projects right now for the outreach mm -hmm. department and mm -hmm. it's a lot of work but it's awesome to see these Girl Scouts come in and some of them have no clue anything about robotics and just see them inspired. Mm -hmm. I mean, we even have like, um, since it's K through 12, we even have um, a, a member that is gonna be potentially joining our mm -hmm. FRC team. Um, and she was like, she was looking into all the different departments and she's like, this is great. Yeah. So it's, it's awesome that it can reach all of those different audiences. And I think it's fun too, because the girls um, have so many different questions that we wouldn't even think of. So it's just fun to like interact with them and see kind of what silly questions they come up with and what serious ones they actually have going on in their head. Yeah. Yeah, and kind of with FIRST, a lot of it is, yeah, getting that exposure mm -hmm. out there. I mean, as much as for us it's everything, I think there's a lot of people who, even in schools and teams that do, or schools that do have FIRST teams, a lot of them might not know it exists. So mm -hmm. being able to get that out there and kind of spread it through schools and communities is, yeah, a big mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And I think, too, we also worked with the younger ages um, through our FTC and FLL, which I know a lot of our team has stayed those late nights throughout the season because FTC and FLL started um, back in, what, August, September. So their competition season and build season has been going for a little bit. So we as a team kind of have the initiative of you guys should go in and, like, help mentor. We answer questions. We help. If there's any issues that they're struggling with, we share our experience because most of us came up on FTC, yep. FLL. So I think it's just really cool to see what the next group that's hopefully coming on to 4607 mm -hmm. will be like and how we can help them. And I think we're excited to hear every single time that, oh, another Call of Lights is on, or it's Tuesday or Thursday nights and the FTC and FLs are coming in and mm -hmm. kids are coming in and we want to see just like what they can do, what they can think of, and maybe ideas. Because we know their games um, when they come out. We watch the videos a couple days afterwards. And we kind of see, we think of ideas of how we could do it, but definitely seeing their creative ways to do it is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then one of our big training initiatives that we've had since 2015 already is Jumpstart. Um, and then this year we decided to bring it a little closer to home and have it in our own high school. Um, we had over 300 attendees, which is absolutely insane. So for those of you guys who don't know Jumpstart, it's a training initiative that we started where professionals from the industries, um, coaches, mentors, and even students from teams will present on different various topics, anywhere from the engineering design side to impact award to media marketing, just to mental health and inclusion. And I think it's amazing what we saw there. It was just a lot of different knowledge being shared. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. Um, we I did a presentation on like basic information, um, and it really it kind of hit me how how crazy it is that 
like in the span, I know because last year was my first year in FRC. So in the span of a year, I have learned so much. Like there are, there are so many components mm-hmm. to first, um, as well as just like terminology and um, kind of introducing people to that felt really special mm-hmm. because it was it took me back to last year when I was being introduced to that. Yeah. 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 Yes, that is kind of a good point that we I think after we've been in this for a while, you do kind of forget, like, what it felt like Mm -hmm. in your first couple years, your first couple games, and being introduced to that. Like, it's, I guess, uh, the lack of better words, magical almost. Pretty mm. much. It can be, it can be a lot because of all, like, the different terminology and everything, but. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, I think just a general introduction (laughs) to it definitely helps. There's, you can definitely do, like, an hour, couple hour course of where you run down everything, but you really just have to go through it to know it. Yeah. Because it changes based on team and based on area and everything. Yep. We see that so. a lot with, like, people mm-hmm. who are brand new to first. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, Operation Carmel Lights. We, there's so much to, to first robotics. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just don't realize, like, all of the information <laughs> you've taken in. Yeah. And, um, like, you'll use terms, you'll be like, oh, yeah, FTC, FRC. First, what what is all of that? Yeah. You have to you have to like break this down yeah. step by step. I, I just think it's it's really interesting how many components there are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all the terms. After training season, so after training, we kind of got back into um, competition season. It wasn't full blown regional or worlds or state, but we kind of got back into that feeling and just the groove of getting out there, competing, and bringing the robot back to the pit crew to hopefully see if they could fix it. Um, so we started off with a few different competitions, one of which was MRI. So I think we had a, a couple different drivers cycle through there. I thought it was really fun. Yeah. Yeah, so. MRI was kind of nice. Like you said, the multiple drivers kind of mm-hmm. got some people who maybe during the normal season don't get as much drive time mm-hmm. uh, during main competitions, but definitely during off season, it's fun to get some different people on the sticks if they want to and yeah, mm-hmm. get some driving experience. I think it was a lot of fun, too. We had a couple new people that we brought down so they can kind of experience a small-scale version, um, and just a bunch of different stuff kind of happened. I think it was a lot of fun just kind of rejoice the memories of, oh, wait, this is what the stress feels like of having to be on the field in two minutes, or, like, I don't know. I just, I like the stress. I thrive off of it, so it's... It's more of a comfort zone for me. I think that's just like that's, <laughs> that's crazy to me. Like I'm I'm always in the audience at at all of our regionals, and I'm like cheerleader, like yeah, let's go. And I'm like, if I was, my heart is pounding out of my chest yeah. right now. How are you driving a robot around and operating it and making it climb and mm-hmm. do backflips? And but seriously, the like, non-intentional backflips. Non-intentional backflips. <laughs> um, but it, it's it's just nuts. Like the. I find it so interesting how people work differently mm-hmm. under pressure. Because, like, I, I recognize with me, I can talk in front of a group, like mm-hmm. a large group, and be just fine. Mm-hmm. But if I were to be competing like that and driving, a, I would just go nuts. Mm-hmm. Like, I would not be able to do well. But you guys do it like it's that. Yeah. And for reference, I was the operator for our team last year. So I just, I don't know, you get in the groove and you just go for it. Yeah, and I guess I don't know about for you guys, but I know kind of, after last year or the year prior being 2021 and off seasons being about all that there was compared to now coming back to off season competitions after having actual regionals, having Mm -hmm. attended worlds state, you kind of do realize how like at the beginning of last year, you're like, wow, off season competition. This is so big and exciting. And then coming back after seeing actual competition, you realize (laughs) <laughs> this is that's just the start and kind of yeah. knowing that the new new members mm-hmm. that's all they've experienced and how much mm-hmm. more they have I think it's really amazing see. though that they do them because it's like a warm-up it's building up yeah. to season and so I feel if they didn't have them then it would be really just throwing the new kids and yeah. even the returning yeah. people because like I didn't remember how they felt until I walked into a couple of the competitions I was like mm-hmm. oh wait that's what it is and so <laughs> I think it was just it's definitely a warm-up that's appreciated over the months leading up to season. My my first event, like competition mm-hmm. event, was week zero last year. Yep. And I was like, this is great. I <laughs> love this. Like, this is amazing. There's so many people. And then you look at maybe two, three months later, we're at the world championship. <laughs> and there's like thousands of people. And I'm like, 
Oh my gosh! To give going to on? give reference, the week zeros have maybe one hundred, maybe one hundred max, one hundred and fifty people, and it's n- half of them aren't official. Them. Not even all of them are official fields, and it's just drive teams and the people who need to be there. So it's really just practicing driving, and after that, and so I understand where you're coming from. It's just crazy to go from there all the way to world yeah. champions. Yeah, and I well. think the world, the, the the size of the week zero does it, does it does. depend. Yeah. Like, I think um, that first one we went to, which is almost like a week negative one still kind of thing. <laughs> it kind of was. Um, it was, yeah, very small, couple yep. teams, uh, unofficial field. Um, and then the second one, yeah, there was how many? There was, 20, there was like teams, 20 teams, yeah. 20 teams or so. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so about the size of an off season, yep. kind of smaller off season event. Yep. Yeah. So I think. I like week zeros. I think they're good experience, yeah. but they're definitely, they're definitely like, oh wait, we have to compete with this in like two yep. or three weeks. Like I, so. I remember, um, <sighs> I can, I remember their. T- I struggle with team numbers big mm-hmm. time, but I can remember twenty fifty two. Yeah. Because their their robot was a monster on the field. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was just so great. The night crawlers are really really talented, but mm-hmm. it was just. I I'll use the word again. It was magical, like yeah. seeing that, <laughs> and then you transition into a regional. And then another regional, and then you're at the world championship. Yep. It's just, I remember the stadium was like from end, like you could barely see from end. Well, yeah, yeah, and that's where Worlds was even a step above. Because, like, regional, it's 60, 70 teams mm-hmm. in the sports stadium, but compared to then going to Georgia where there's Brown over 400 Center, teams, 400 teams uh, FTC and FLL yeah. champs at the same time, it's, yeah. Yeah. So. Like, it was definitely. Definitely worth going down there, and it's definitely a brand new experience going down there. Even if you're not like competing and just watching, it's a completely different mm-hmm. experience. So we finished off MRI. We ended up getting second place, um, <laughs> which is pretty good. Um, and then we moved into MMR, which we competed again. It was a lot of fun. A lot of our teams that we're close with and know a lot of the students there um, mm-hmm. actually had pits right around us. So if we weren't working on the robot or out competing, then we spent a lot of time talking with them, asking if they need anything, cracked a couple jokes. But um, yeah, we finished off MMR in first. Yeah. So I think that's a pretty big accomplishment coming out. So I don't know. Were either of you two able to attend MMR? I, yes. Greg Wynn, yes. you want to talk about your experience? Yeah, so... Um, Oh boy, where do I start with them, Mark? So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, kind of started out, uh, and kind of the quals, I guess, for went fairly well. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely a lot of good matches in that. Uh, I think it was fairly evenly matched for a lot of it. Um, yeah. There were a lot of good teams kind of being an off-season event, if teams did improve even over the mm-hmm. off-season and stuff. Um, I think there was a couple teams brought in some new... Uh, a couple testing out some different swerve drive mm-hmm. chassis, different things like that. That was always cool to see, kind of mm-hmm. what other teams are doing throughout the off season too. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, also at MMR we had the uh, mini jump start, kind of at the did beginning. Have the mini Those jump couple start. Uh, training events at the beginning of that. Yeah, we had a few students presenting at that. So um, again, we're thankful for any time that we're able to present. But I think they had fun presenting. I know I wasn't able to go up there because we were prepping the robot, but. Yeah. Yeah, I did, uh, with our FMEA team, uh, did uh, another presentation on FMEA, kind of spreading that throughout the community as well. So, yeah, I think, honestly, MMR was a lot of fun. Um, That was really the one that brought us back into competition because we're competing for first um, right at the end of the finals and just going through, like, the final stress again. It was, (laughs) I don't know, I, again, thrive off of it. So it's a different, different experience entirely. So I know I so and just for those who don't know, can you guys explain like the acronyms for MRI and MMR for those are who yeah. Are so MRI is Mini Robotics Invitational, I believe. Yeah, um, Minnesota. That's Minnesota. Minnesota yeah. Robotics Invitational, um, and then MMR is Mini Mini Regional. So they're both kind of local um, miniature regionals inside of. Minnesota state boundaries. So yes, even many many is an abbreviation too. It's mini Minnesota. Regional. Mini yeah. Minnesota. Regional. I've always called it mini we mini. Love yep. <laughs> um, I was I was at um, theater when MMR yep. was happening. I was in Beauty and the Beast. I was a hat seller. You know, 
But um, <laughs> but anyway, I, I look at my phone, and because I couldn't go, and I look at my phone, and they're like, hey, guys, we just won the Outreach Award. I'm like, what? What happened? <laughs> yeah. What am I missing right now? What's my... They're like, congratulations, everyone. <laughs> what? So if you guys mean... We were awarded about, that, yeah. Yeah. So we kind of... There was... They did some judge talking um, that came around, so just to kind of prep new teams and to get new people to the teams kind of involved to kind of show off that aspect. So they had a few judges come around, and we awarded the Outreach Award. So a lot of Crown of the Lights, a lot of different things that we've done over the off season to kind of contribute to that. But it was a lot of fun. We got the first place and the Outreach Award. So it was a lot. It was a good day. It was really good to kind of start season off like that. Yeah. But, I mean... And that's not that's the only things that we have done with other teams and with other people. Throughout this like last couple of months, starting back in August, we have been doing training, we have been recruiting new members. Do you kinda wanna talk about the training and stuff you guys have been doing? Yeah, so I guess kind stuff? of on our yeah, build uh, engineering side, um, we've really never stopped actually. <laughs> um, so true. we kinda started off right there, end of the school year, June. Um, I think we were coming in normally two nights a week, Tuesday, Thursday, to do a mix of um, some CAD training as well as some in-the-shop kind of technical training uh, on different machines and stuff. So, uh, yeah, kind of went through, hosted uh, CAD sessions every Tuesday night, trying to get everyone kind of prepped for that for the season. And uh, did some stuff in the shop, some different off-season projects, so... Mm-hmm. I know um, with Impact, uh, we did not, mm-hmm. and for those, if anybody's like unfamiliar with FIRST, uh, it used to be called the Chairman's Department, now it's Impact, because um, it's really just about how teams impact the community, mm-hmm. but Impact last year didn't really have a training, mm-hmm. just because um, we were all brand new to the department, mm-hmm. yeah. so we were all learning, mm-hmm. and what's so amazing about this year is that um, we got to give training to not only just like members of the team who were going to help us with like some of our executive mm-hmm. summaries, but we, we got to sit down uh, interested people just in the impact mm-hmm. department a couple of times and go through things with them and actually teach them. And it was really great just because last year we were kind of thrown out, thrown out in the yeah. cold just because all of us were yep. new. And mm-hmm. that's just what happens when you don't, you know, you don't have somebody who was there before in the impact department, but so it's really great. We can now mentor mm-hmm. those like the new kids and kind of build people up. Cause right now the leads are Vincent and I were both seniors. So we really need to get those young kids involved and interested. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know training wise, a lot of the other departments have been doing training, like media marketing has been doing camera training and video editing and podcasts and all that. And that's been great. So I know there's a bunch of different departments that have been doing training sessions and just kind of getting some off-season projects done to help better move the season along and not be so stressed and time in a time crunch throughout the season. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and I'm honestly excited to lead up to kickoff for mm-hmm. on Saturday because we're really excited, so that's going to be a lot of fun. We're hosting here, so, yeah. 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 I'm really excited to see some familiar faces mm-hmm. from Jumpstart. <laughs> I made some friends. Yeah. From um, from Ann and Dale, yeah, made some friends, so I'm really excited to go see him again. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So yeah, yeah. well, thank you for listening to the CIS podcast, and thank you to sponsors, parents, and mentors. See ya.